are built in. So the meals are three times a day. Some facilities offer two meals a day. Some facilities will give you a stove so that you can cook that third meal if you don't opt to purchase it. Some don't have a stove. We don't have a stove because we give you three meals a day. I know there's a lot of ladies that like to cook and they ask, but we do have common kitchen areas and families will come in on occasion and cook with the family member. But I gotta tell you, after they get in, most everybody's very happy not to have to worry about the grocery shopping, getting the groceries, bringing the groceries in, and preparing the meals. So the three meals are there for you to have. Do you have to come out? No, you don't. And, I, and some people ask me that. What if I just want to be alone you know, for breakfast or lunch? That's entirely up to you. You can bring in little cooking things, little uh, stoves, um, toasters, and coffee makers, and have lots of residents that just want to like breakfast. Generally in assisted living, the third meal of the day, in all of them, is a lighter meal. And the reason behind that is they give the heaviest meal in the afternoon because the amount of calories and activity that you need for another meal at five o'clock doesn't have to be as heavy, especially if you're retiring early in the evening. And that's just the common principle in most of the assisted livings that I go in and out of. Does anybody have any questions about that really, yet? Really short questions. Remember, really short saving until the end. In assisted living, one of the nice things that we have are pull cords. They're in the bathrooms usually and out in the common areas. These are safety cords. They do not call 911. So unlike home where you have the lifeline, if you pull that cord because maybe you fell and got twisted in an awkward spot or need a little help with something in the bathroom that you didn't anticipate, the companions or the home health aides respond and come in. Now the executive office You mean, of you mean the Affairs, town fire truck doesn't arrive in the front of your door the way it does it? Yeah, the town fire truck doesn't come in and when I inter when I bring someone through a tour, I do make it very clear that that pull cord is for your health 24 hours a day for the staff to come and help you with anything that you need. It could be bending over, believe it or not. I've seen this, bending over and picking up a small piece of paper or just pivoting the wrong way, the wrong way in the bathroom, slowly, and, and residents fall down. Little, little things like that. Therefore, they pull the cord, we come in, and that's an important thing to know. Our home health aides and companions in all the assisted livings, and I'm talking about all of them, need to respond in less than seven minutes. We're mandated by the Executive Office of Elder Affairs to make sure that you do not wait for a long period of time for the help that you need. And I'm you're proud to say that we do that at Christopher Rights. Less than five minutes is our standard to make sure that you get help. In addition, we do recommend residents do bring their lifelines. Why is that? Because you're still considered in your own home. So if you fall, you have a one bedroom apartment and you fall in the middle of the floor and you cannot get to pull that cord on the wall, you hit that lifeline. The lifeline not only will call you know, outside staff for help the 911, but our companions come running down there to make sure you're all right as well. So there's a lot of supported safety services in there. The activities, the activities are seven days a week. Again, this is all assisted living. I went to many assisted livings and saw it's not just Christopher Heights. All kinds of things that they offer, religious, all different types of religion uh, ceremonies, getting, you know, uh, Shabbat services to Catholic services, Protestant services. We have deacons coming to talk about loss, pet therapy, dogs that come in that are just loving and want attention that do tricks, bingo, bus trips out of the building, arts and crafts, artists, performers, lectures. We have a lot of educational seminars at Christopher Heights from local areas. Marlboro Historical Science Society comes in. And we also make an effort, every assisted living, when you come in, they're gonna interview you. 
And then they're going to find out a little bit about your past because they want to bring that into your experience when you move in. And if they can, they will incorporate some activities that you might be interested in, maybe they don't have. But all of that is included in assisted living and the housekeeping. So we have full-time housekeepers. They always have full-time housekeepers in all of them. They come once a week and clean your apartment, the bathroom, the kitchen area, dusting, vacuuming. They enter your trash twice a day. <coughs> they make your bed. They change your linens. In Christopher Heights case, we do not wash your laundry with other people's laundry. We wash your laundry at night. The night staff individually, you have a day of the week to get your laundry. You put it in your apartment, they take it, they wash it at night, in the morning it's put back in your room for you. So see, they do all the things that your husband would always do. <laughs> they cook for you, they make the bed, they do all this stuff. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch upon that word independence because I find, and again, I, I enjoy speaking to the residents and the families as they make their transition. And, and the word assist and the word independence kind of go back and forth. They're tough little words, I think. And you have to remember, you do become more independent. You do. All right, so now you're not, you're saying, well, I'm not driving and I'm moving in and, you know, I don't do my laundry and I don't cook anymore. How is that independent? Well, if you're home, you're not really doing it, and then your family's coming to do it for you, and they're worried about your safety, and you have to focus on your safety every day instead of enjoying life. So you become independent now where you can just enjoy life. You're living in a wonderful place that takes care of all those things that you did your whole life. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I, I'm signing up because I, I don't like my laundry. I mean, that, there's a lot of things I'd like to give up now. So that's how you become independent because you get to do more things socially. You can pick when you want to go to meals. You can hang out downstairs. You don't have to worry about all those other chores. We take the chores away. Assisted living is a big transition step. And again, I think I touched upon that before I stood up, but first thing, you really have to think about what's going on at home and how much you can do for yourself and how safe you are. I've seen little, little things that create big falls. Missing cardiac medications twice a week is detrimental. The smallest of doses of medication. Maybe you just forgot. No one's saying you have dementia. But maybe you just forgot and you keep forgetting and you can't figure out what to remember. I mean, that's normal aging. It happens. Your balance gets off a little bit. And sometimes these little things, these little pivoting, picking up a paper can cause big injuries. And then you end up going to a nursing home, and then from there you transition to, into assisted living without being able to go home, pick out what's important to you, and take it with you. And I think those folks have the hardest time because they literally never are able to go back home and take all their important belongings with them to assisted living. So I cherish, whenever I go meet a new resident, I cherish their apartments. I walk around, I want to know, because everything they took is beautiful and very much a part of their lives. And the residents are able to plan for that, transition the easiest, they're the happiest. They don't struggle as much. The ones that don't, that come from the, you know, the rehabs that come in, eventually they're very happy, within one to three months. But, you know, it's a change. You didn't expect it. You couldn't plan. But then they wrap their arms around it. They figure out that, you know what, I have an elevator. Someone's doing my laundry. The cooking's out there, this is good. The Executive Office of Elder Affairs runs all assisted living. So every policy and procedure that we have in place at Christopher Heights and all the other assisted livings is mandated by them. They come every two years and they inspect every assisted living facility and make sure that we're providing the care, supervision, and safety that you deserve, that you come for. If you have any questions about what that means, if you make an, an acronym of that, if you do E-O-E-A, if you write that down, and you type that into the computer, E-O-E-A of Massachusetts, all the regulations are going to come up. And it's there for the layperson to read. So if you have any other questions about more details, that it's too much for me to provide and, and, and Arthur in one minute up here, you could go there and find out any questions that you have. There's also something called specialty care units in assisted living. 
Christopher Heights does not have one, but these are the transitions when memory is too far gone to be managed even assisted living. So if you need a lot of cueing and direction and your short-term memory is significant enough that it's a safety issue, then the specialty care units are designed for those folks that have that. New, New Horizons, by the way, has a specialty yeah. care unit. So New Horizons, if you, yeah. you want to visit that just to get a sense of it. And, and there are a number of, number of folks there that actually has worked very well for several clients where the, you know, the, the person who does not have significant memory problems gets an assisted living unit there, and then the one with memory problems is in the specialty unit. So they're both right there. So you literally are walking down the hall to visit your spouse, right? Yeah, that does work out very well. I've seen that in other assisted livings. It's very nice to have the two to be there. And again, it is your home. I know that, that that's, you're all very fortunate to be in your home many, many, many years. Very fortunate. But Christopher Heights and all the assisted livings, they really want to make you feel like you're at home. And they really work hard at it. Again, I did go in, as a nurse, I went into many, many assisted livings. And I really, I, I think it's a wonderful business. They really take care of the senior, keeping you safe, keeping you entertained, and making you feel like you're at home. And it's, it's hard to explain that unless you go, and you really need, if you're ever interested, to go look at each one and see how it feels for you, because that, just like when you bought your own home, you decided you liked your own home because the way it felt or where the bedroom was or the layout, you have to do the same for assisted living. You really do. And it is, and it sounds costly, but Arthur's gonna teach you about it. Oh, and it is. It it's is? A, it's a little expensive. So, so talk to him about the numbers, about, you know, so what kinds of units, are, for example, are available at Christopher Heights, yep. and how much do they cost a month? Well, yeah, it is costly, but it can be affordable also. And Christopher Heights strives to be, their mission is affordable housing for seniors and assisted living. And what you need to pay attention, and I, I'm going to talk about all assisted livings, but you have to pay attention is when you come in, what services they offer when you initially come in, and what adds on as you go. But you do, it does, you use your Social Security to pay for it at Christopher Heights. So, for instance, our studios are $4,200. But that includes everything. That includes your one and a half hours of care a day, three meals. That includes the safety checks at night, all transportation on the buses, all the activities. We don't have a surprise, you know, or $50 if you call the nurse, you get charged. And there's a little bit of that, but, but not much going around. But how would we pay people pay for their rent? And they're surprised when they come in. A fellow and a family just came in and said, I, I, I wish, does everybody know this? I, I said, I think they find out when they come in. But your rent is 4200 You subtract your Social Security from that. You subtract if you have a pension off that. Then you would subtract if you have the VA benefit, depending on the amount. And whatever's left over, sometimes people have two or three pensions. If you're a couple, it's both your social securities. And whatever's left over, you supplement whatever you have in savings that you, your income. 